When it comes to getting through footage in Premiere Pro, every editor has their own process. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the tips and tricks that I use in order to get through B-roll and get to the finished product of my edit faster. If something like that interests you and you are into video tech tutorials like myself, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Let's go ahead and get to creating. If you can see right here, if you have a mouse that has the buttons by the thumb, I've found that this is very helpful inside the timeline. And I'll show you what I mean right meow. On the screen, I have the settings for the mouse for the system. And what I've done is changed my thumb buttons. Instead of going back and forwards for pages, now I have them in horizontal scroll. And what this allows me to do is while scrolling through footage, I can now in the timeline use my thumb to move along the timeline, which I think a lot of editors might find super helpful. If you're curious, I'll put the links in the description, but I feel like this is one of the most prominent mouse, mice, mouses at Target right now. It's just the Logitech M510, but it's a pretty abundant mouse. Tip number two is super important. And after I implemented this in my own editing, it sped up my process so much. But again, this is just for me and it may work for you too. And it has to do with the manipulation of how fast you're moving the playhead. What I mean by that is shuttling in what most people are used to are using the J, K, and L keys. If you were to hit J, it goes backwards at normal speed. If you were to hit L, it's just like hitting spacebar and going forward. You hit K and it stops. You, you double tap L, now it will go at double speed. You hit L again and then it will go at triple speed, quadruple speed, so on and so forth. It keeps doubling the speed every single time you either hit J or L to go forward or backwards. And hitting K will be like pause or spacebar if you were already in play. The other movement that's pretty basic within most NLEs is using the arrow keys to move one frame over or one frame back. Now you're gonna be using these keystrokes a lot and I think about the compounding time that it takes to do those keystrokes, moving my hand from the mouse to come over to these arrows and then coming over from the mouse in hitting J, K, or L. Maybe I would use my left hand, but I also have a whole set of keystrokes that I've set up on my left hand that if I keep my left hand right here, I'm going to be able to access them pretty fast. So anytime I'm gonna hit J, K, L, I'm always gonna be moving my hand like this. Let's get rid of that huge movement. What I've done is I've actually moved all of those keystrokes right here onto my number pad. The top ones are to step one frame over to the right or to the left. So here's to the right, here's to the left. My five and six right here are now the equivalent of hitting L or J. So if I hit six, it's now going to play back at normal speed and then double speed, triple speed, quadruple speed, so on and so forth. What's nice about this is my thumb is over here on the play button on my space bar. So that eliminates me even having to move the K key over here to my number pad. The next part is I've actually used my step five frames ahead on these bottom keys. And I can tell you having all the manipulation of the playhead on the number pad is a huge game changer in terms of efficiency when it comes to editing. To give you an idea, all I have to do is step right here and let's say I wanted to get this hair blow. And now all I have to do is add an edit add an edit, move up, double click, say I like that shot, but I only wanna get a couple steps, so on and so forth. The fact that the play button is right here and I just wanna move a couple like this and manipulate a couple frames really helps. So do with that as you may, maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't. I hope it does. The very last tip that I have has to do with scrubbing through B-roll altogether. And that uses something like this guy that's probably dusty on some parts. We're just gonna ignore that. If I have a whole bunch of B-roll that I've been sent or that I shot and I just need to find a whole bunch of uh, selects within my cut, what I do is I use an actual tablet and I'll show you why it could be very efficient to use a tablet. It's because you don't have to click and drag. All you have to do is put a pencil down and scrub through footage. If you're a person that scrubs through footage and selects your B-roll on the timeline, then maybe this trick works for you. That's kind of my workflow. Obviously other people get their B-roll in completely different ways. So again, 
it's all up to the editor themselves. But what I like to do is say I'll add an edit right here or as she passes, I'll add edit, add edit, move it up. Nothing going on here. You can just get past, ooh, I saw this hair flick right there. So add edit, hit play. I like that shot and we're done. Let's go ahead and move it up. Maybe I'm done with this spot. Ooh, we got a nice profile view with the city. Add edit, brings it up, add edit there. Now after this technique is done, all you have to do on the editor, say this wasn't here in because it, it didn't record any sound, but all you would have to do, click here and delete. And then all of a sudden, all of your selects are right next to each other. Imagine if you had a whole timeline of this, just like I do right here. I find it much easier and simpler to scrub through footage with a Wacom tablet or any kind of tablet with a uh, little stylist and just get through it a little bit faster than uh, if I was using a mouse to click and drag and definitely faster than if you're on a laptop and you're, you're doing this all the time. If you're curious about that last technique and you haven't ever used add edit before, make sure that these boxes are highlighted for the clips on the tracks that you want to manipulate. So let's say this track was up here. If I were to hit add edit, it's not going to do anything. It does something to this bottom one because this is selected, but I would have to select this and then hit add edit and then it will work. And if you are confused on why I keep saying add edit, for those that haven't manipulated footage that way, you use command K or what I do is I actually put it on F because that's right where this finger is and I use add edit all the time. I never use the razor tool, but again, completely up to the editor's choice. These are just a couple tips that I use and maybe you would like to try as well. If you have like a tablet laying around or if you have those, um, thumb manipulators on your mouse and then obviously if you have a number pad give it a try don't forget to leave me that thumbs up if this has helped you or leave me a comment down below on some of the tips and tricks that you guys use till next time i hope you guys live a life of abundance and hopefully there's some more videos on here that can help you become a faster and more efficient editor bye